ready to dive into a grim darkness of the far future. We're tackling Warhammer 40K's 10th edition core rules this time. And wow, you weren't kidding, these excerpts are something else. It... It's more than moving miniatures around, it's like the story's baked right in. Exactly. Think of it like this. The core rules, they're the DNA of Warhammer 40K, yeah. They decide everything, how you make your army, the tactics you use on the battlefield, the whole shebang. So every good warlord needs their army. Where do we even start with that? Start with a plan, of course. And in this game, that means detachments. Detachments, huh? Sounds kind of technical. What are they and why so important? Well, picture this. You're putting together like a strike force. You wouldn't just grab random soldiers, tanks, whatever, right? Chaos. No thanks. <laughs> Right. You want it organized, units that work well together, pack a punch. That's detachments. They decide what types of units, how many you can field, keeps it balanced, strategic. So it's all about synergy right from the get-go. Yeah. Do these detachments limit what units I can pick, though? What if I really want a specific squad, like super elite warriors? They do, but it's not limiting your creativity, more like guiding it. Each detachment, it's got its own rules. Some need specific unit types, like the tough battle line units. Those are your core. Others let you take those specialized units, those elite guys you mentioned, often called dedicated transport units because of their vehicles and all. But listen, whatever your faction, play style, there's a detachment out there to make them shine. Makes sense. Keeps it fair. No one's army is just unstoppable super soldiers right out the gate. <laughs> okay, so I pick my detachment. I'm itching to get these warriors onto the battlefield. How do I know what they can do? Data sheets, my friend. Each unit, it's like having a character sheet, RPG style. It tells you how fast it moves, how tough it is, weapons, and the fun part, special abilities. Oh yeah, the special abilities. Heard rumors of units teleporting right into battle. Deep strike? Something like that. Tell me more. Picture this. Enemy thinks they've got you pinned down, then boom, out of nowhere, teleporting warriors right behind them. That's dub strike. Let some units ignore normal deployment so you can flank, surprise attack from the rear, nasty stuff. Yeah, that's just cool. It has a whole other level to it. Knowing when to spring those deep strike units could win the whole thing. Exactly. And that's one example. Some units are great at rough terrain. Others have crazy shooting. Some even have psychic powers. You name it. Psychic powers. Now we're talking. But hold on. Before we unleash the Psyker Fury... Where exactly are we fighting? Just plain board game setup doesn't scream epic galactic war to me. You get it. Warhammer 40K takes terrain seriously. We're talking blown up buildings, huge defenses, craters, minefields, the works. The core rules, they're big on using that terrain, making the battlefield a challenge, a weapon itself. So I can't just have a strong army. You got to be a tactical genius too. Yeah. Using the environment. Like a good general would. Take cover, for example. In this game, units hunkered down behind walls, barricades, even a pile of rubble, they get a benefit of cover, harder to hit. Those ruins aren't just for show, they can win you the fight. Now that's what I call immersive. I can already see my guys taking cover, firing from behind some wrecked tank, exchanging fire. It's more than just moving pieces around, that's for sure. Right, and that's what I love about these core rule strategic decisions. They're tied to the story you're building with every game. Just brilliant. All right, we've got our army, understand the data sheets, ready to use this awesome terrain. But how does a battle actually work step by step? Okay, so picture this. Tension's high, your troops are set, across from you, your opponent's about to make their move. That's when the battle rounds start. Each one is like a dance, strategy, skill, and some luck thrown in. A dance is strategy, I like it. Yeah. Break it down for us. What are the moves in this war dance? Every round starts with the command phase. You're the general here, you're checking the situation, giving orders, and using your resources to outsmart the opponent. Resources, like what, extra ammo, med kits? Even more important, command points, that's what I'm talking about. They're like currency for unleashing big abilities, pulling off cunning moves, turning the tide, you know. Interesting. So it's not just about raw power. It's knowing when to use your smarts, your resources. Uh, What's next after this strategy part? Once you've given your orders, thought it through, Time for the movement phase. This is where your units come alive, moving across the battlefield, taking up positions, or maybe a tactical retreat. Ah, yes, the tactical retreat. Sometimes you got to live to fight another day, right? Exactly. There are actually three ways your units move. Normal move, advance, and if things are bad, the fallback move. Okay, break down the moves. Normal move, I think I get that one. Simple enough. A unit goes a distance, whatever its move characteristic is on that data sheet. Can't end too close to the enemy, though. That's engagement range, where things get messy. It's a yeah. balance, closing in, but not getting caught off guard. Engagement range. You can already feel the tension. So 
Normal move, got it. What about those risky advances? Advancing, now there's a bold move. Think of it like a calculated risk. You roll a die, add it to the unit's move, that's how far they go. You cover more ground, maybe outmaneuver your opponent, but Uvious. units that advance, they can't shoot or charge that turn. Big gamble, sometimes you got it, right? High risk, high reward. And when it's time to get out of dodge, that's the fallback move. You got it. Disengaging, plain and simple. Back away from the enemy, regroup, find a better spot. Doesn't sound too bad, just back up. Not that easy. Units falling back, they can't shoot or charge either, so they're vulnerable. And if they gotta move through enemy units to get to safety, desperate escape tests, that's what we're talking about. Each model running for it rolls a die, bad roll, and well. That's one less soldier for you. Yikes. <laughs> Talk about pressure. <laughs> okay, so our units have moved, maybe some reinforcements show up. Time to unleash the firepower. Time for the shooting phase. Laser beams lighting up the place. Those cannons you mentioned earlier, they're earning their keep. Targeting. Can I just say fire at will, or is it more specific than that? Indiscriminate destruction, tempting, but we're a little more refined. In Warhammer 40k, you gotta see him to hit him. Your shooting units can only target what's in range and visible. No firing blind, huh? Mm -hmm. But those long-range weapons, surely they don't need a direct line of sight, do they? Sometimes brute force needs a little help. Indirect fire, that's the ticket. Weapons with that, they can target what they can't see. Those long bombards, artillery strikes, the beautiful. But trade-off time. Those shots might be less accurate. Little penalty to your rolls. Gotta love that element of chance, even with planet-killing weapons. So targets locked, weapons ready. How does the attack actually work? Here's where those dice really fly. Each attack, it's a sequence. Roll to hit, depends on the weapon's accuracy, any bonuses or penalties from terrain, all that. Success. Roll again, this time to wound that's weapon strength against the target's toughness. Hitting's not enough. Gotta hit hard, right? You got it. Successful <laughs> wound. Opponent gets a chance to save their unit. Another dice roll, hoping for a miracle. Depends on their armor, protection, bit of luck never hurts. And if that save fails, time to inflict some damage. You know it. Damage based on the weapon, and when a unit loses all its wounds, time to retire them from the battlefield, let's just say. Those little plastic soldiers deserve a break. Speaking of, I've heard whispers, mortal wounds, scary stuff. What makes them different? Mortal wounds, they ignore those saves we talked about. Straight up devastating attacks, armor won't help you there. So even the toughest units can get taken out by one of these? Absolutely. Throws a curveball into things, you know. Even in the 41st millennium, death comes for everyone. Glad this is just a game then. So we've moved, we've shot. Can we get up close and personal now? Chuckling. The charge phase, my friend. Close quarters combat is about to get real. How does charging work? Do I just point my troops and yell, <laughs> get them? It's chuckling. Love the enthusiasm, but there's strategy even in that. Yeah. First, you got to be within striking distance, 12 inches, and no charging if you advanced or fell back this turn. Can't just blitz across the board, huh? All right, <laughs> what happens next? You pick your target, roll those dice, hope for the best. The roll tells you how far your unit charges, got to get within that engagement range. Then, if you're feeling brave, it's base-to-base -base combat time. Miniatures practically touching. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's the spirit. Fight phase, things get brutal. Whoever charged or has an ability letting them fight first, they get to unleash first, adds another layer of strategy to those charges. So even in a brawl, there's an order to things, huh? Always. Every attack, same sequence. Hit roll, wound roll, all that. But now, in the fight phase, a lot of units get bonuses to their attacks. Close combat makes people wilder. And of course, some abilities only work now. Crazy combos reflects how your guys fight. Can't even imagine the carnage. What happens after a unit's fought? Do they just stand there? Never let your guard down in Warhammer 40k. After fighting, they consolidate, move a little bit, get a better position, maybe finish off a wounded enemy, get ready for the next attack. Momentum's everything. So this is shaping up to be a wild system. Every phase has something going on. That's the beauty of it. And speaking of shaking things up, remember those command points we talked about? Time to use them for real with stratagems. Stratagems, those cards that can flip the whole game, right? Yeah. Well, what kind of maneuvers are we talking about? Imagine, enemies about to overrun you, you're outnumbered, desperate. But you play a stratagem, this card lets your units fire again, counterattack out of nowhere, pushes the enemy back, just like that. So they're like perfectly timed reinforcements, unexpected heroics, stuff like that. Exactly that. Unpredictable, keeps everyone on their toes. They can do all sorts of things, boost attacks, risky maneuvers, even bring back a destroyed unit if you're lucky. Bring back a destroyed unit. Now that's just unfair. They can be strong, sure, but there's a cost. 
Command points, remember, got to be smart, save them for the right moment, big counterattack, or use them early. Get the upper hand quick. Choices, choices. Resource management and tactics. This is great. Like some kind of galactic chess match, every move matters. Mm -hmm. Are all stratagems equal or are there different kinds? Good question. They're as varied as the factions themselves. Some are all about offense, more firepower, bigger charges. Others are defensive, shoring up, protecting a key unit. Some even mess with the battlefield itself, diversions, hazards, you name it. Okay, now I need an example. Something to make my opponents sweat. Let's say your opponent's charged in, feeling confident, they think they've got you. Then you play Heroic Intervention. Heroic Intervention, I like the sound of that already. One of your units countercharges right then and there. Blades clashing, guns blazing, beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. It's like they think they've won, then bam, yeah. heroic countercharge throws them completely off. Those moments are what make it so fun. Exactly. Stratagems, they add that story, that excitement, you know, not just cards. There are moments of brilliance, last-ditch efforts, those lucky breaks that change everything. I'm sold on stratagems. Simple idea, huge impact on the battle. No wonder Warhammer 40K is famous for its story and the gameplay. We've covered a lot, army building, moving, fighting, these awesome stratagems. And we haven't even touched on advanced stuff like strategic reserves, which I'm dying to hear about. Strategic reserves, that's where things get really interesting. Unexpected reinforcements, the whole nine yards. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. What are strategic reserves exactly? Picture this. Battle's raging. Enemy thinks they've got you figured out. Then, from the skies, maybe hidden within the terrain itself, your strategic reserves arrive. Talk about a surprise. So it's like holding back some units, secret weapon kind of thing. Exactly. Your toughest veterans waiting to strike at just the right moment. Or specialized units. Fast flyers, those deep strikers we talked about. I'm seeing the possibilities here. It's not just what you bring, it's how and when you deploy them. You got it. Adds a whole other layer of strategy. Wait for your opponent to commit, then unleash the reserves. Total counterattack. Love it. Hold them, fold them, then unleash the reserves to crush the enemy. Anything else about deployment? You mentioned different ways to do it earlier. Oh, yeah. Deep strike, bypassing normal deployment, that was one. But... Units can have other unique abilities, too. Oh, right. Like, what else? The scout's ability, for example. Right. Those units, they move and shoot before the first turn even starts. So even before the main fight, there are skirmishes, positioning. Wow, these core rules really make things dynamic right from the start. They do. It's more than just a rule book. It's like a toolkit for endless possibilities. Army comp, deployment, every choice you make changes the battle, tells its own story. I'm hooked. Speaking of stories, I've got to say... These rules do more than explain the game. They hint at this huge, detailed universe. Yeah, that's what grabs people. This mix of strategy and storytelling, it's unique. Every rule, every unit, it's got a story behind it. Like the rules are lore, part of the world itself. You got it. Those data sheets, they don't just list stats. They give you background flavor text. Makes those units come alive, shows their place in this giant Warhammer universe. So I'm learning the rules, but also getting a history lesson. Understanding the scope of it all. Give me an example. Sure. Say you're intrigued by the Adeptus Astartes, the space marines, right? Genetically engineered super soldiers, the whole deal. You look at their data sheets, right? You'll see how tough they are, obviously, but it's more than that. It'll mention their training, centuries of it, the loyalty to the emperor, all the legendary battles they've been in. It's all there. Talk about bringing it to life. Every data sheet is like a story waiting to happen. No wonder people go all in on the lore, the background of their armies. Totally. And that connection, it makes the game even better. It's not just moving pieces on a board anymore. It's leading these legendary warriors, outsmarting enemies. You're making your own legends right there on the tabletop. Your own space opera. Every dice roll is another chapter. Love it. That's it. And the core rules, they're the foundation, yeah. The mm -hmm. framework you use to build those stories. Heroism, betrayal, galactic conquest, it's all in there. We've covered so much. Building our armies, deploying them, how to move, how to fight, those stratagems, crazy stuff. And I know there's even more, those advanced rules we just got a taste of. We've barely scratched the surface, really. The core rules, the Warhammer 40,000 universe is huge. Exciting and kind of intimidating. I get why people spend years on this. Decades, even. It's a journey, no doubt. Always new strategies to try, new stories, new ways to get into this crazy, detailed universe they've built. So true. All right, listener, what do we learn today diving deep into Warhammer 40,000's 10th edition core rules? We learned these rules. They're more than just a how-to guide. They're an invitation to this massive world of 
epic battles, amazing characters, and stories you can tell forever. You've seen how strategic it is, the choices you make, the scale of it all. Warhammer 40,000 is more than just a hobby. It's an experience. You've seen how dynamic it is every step of the way. How you build your army, how you deploy them. Every choice matters. This is just the beginning of your journey into the grim darkness of the far future. A universe where all of these factions are fighting, incredible technology, gothic style. It's all a sight to behold. Every battle has a story behind it. And every victory, every loss, it all adds to the saga. So as you start your own Warhammer 40,000 adventure, just remember... In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And the fate of the galaxy, well, it rests in your hands.